Hello? All right, I'm on. Well, many of you know me, but if you don't, I'm Jacob Henry, and um, I'll be preaching from the Great Commission tonight at the end of Matthew, and I was reading through this, the, what do you call it? I'm sorry, I got a loss of words. Order of service, and I was looking through, and it was like, welcome and announcements, Matthew Hoffer, worship and song, Pastor Garrett, etc., etc., and then message, Jacob Henry. And then I realized that Danny Dur- Derner rigged this. <laughs> so, yeah, so I'll be preaching from the Great Commission, and I was called to ministry when I was about six years old, and um, I still feel that calling, and I, um, I'm going to share this message with you tonight, and I'm a little bit nervous, so just bear with me. So, um, it's Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20. All right, the Great Commission. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority on, in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the very end of the age. Will you pray with me? Lord, tonight I pray that you would use what I have to say and what I feel that you have laid on my heart, God, to speak to these people. God, I pray that everybody would leave this room changed, God, and that you would just work through me and that it would not be my words, but your words, God. And I pray that you would just use this sermon, God, and speak to somebody. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, uh, I just got to, uh, for peace of mind, Shane Nance asked me this morning if I would be doing the kick because whenever my dad gets excited, he'll kick up in the air like this. I just want to tell you all right now, you have no worry about that, because I will not be doing that. (laughs) So, verse 16 um, talks about the 11 disciples uh, went to Galilee and went up on this mountain to which Jesus had directed them. So, they, Jesus had already risen again. He had already, um, they knew, they knew who, what had happened. He had died on the cross. He saw him die on the cross. And then he told them to go up onto this mountain uh, to meet him there as their last place to meet him. So, he gets up there. And the Pharisees, this is what's happened beforehand. The Pharisees had promised these soldiers um, money not to tell what they had seen because Jesus rose from the grave. Uh, Jesus told them to go to this mountain, so this is where we're at right now. And then, verse 17, this is an important part. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. So they had seen him die on the cross. They had seen him die. But now, he's back in front of them, and they worshipped him, but it was a fake worship almost. It was a, it was a doubting worship. And, and they, they still doubted. I don't, I don't know how. I, personally, I question if you could even doubt because you see him die, and he's there in front of you again. So, yeah, it's good stuff. Verse 18. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority on heaven and earth has been given to me. So he, he's, saying, he's almost to soothe them, I think, that um, all th- no worry, I'm, I'm, I'm the one. All power has been given to me. Don't worry. The ab- I'm, the abs- I'm the absolute power source. Amen? Amen, Amen. yeah. So he's, he's just trying to soothe them. And then you get into the good part. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the very end of the age. So Jesus, he basically gives them three commands and one promise. He's like, let me go to my next page. This is the part I want to focus on. Lead people to Jesus everywhere, um, baptize them, teach them, and then I will be with you. So he's giving them these commands, but he's still, it's not like they're alone on that. They, they, Jesus will still be with them, so there's no need to worry. I want you to think for a moment who you've witnessed to this past month. Just one person. Who have you witnessed to the entire past month? Rhetorical question, don't worry. I won't make you say it in front of everybody. And I, I just want you to think also, how many souls could have been led to Jesus if we would only witness in our workplaces or in our schools just once a month? And, but I want you to also think, how many of you have prayed for people to know Christ? And I, I just want you to think about this. How many of you are praying it but not actually doing it? And I have an illustration here. It's a Francis Chan illustration. I just thought it was good, though, so I stole it. 
So if I grow up and I have a son and I tell him to clean his room, I expect him to clean his room. All right, so I don't want my son to come back two hours later and say, I memorized what you said. I'll be like, I don't care what you, you, if you memorize it, I want you to do it. But what if he also said, well, I memorized it in four languages, including Greek. I still wouldn't be impressed. Or if he was going to hold a study there with his friends about it, I don't care. Or if he, or, um, if he write, writes a song about it and sings it, I don't care that either. That, but this is what Christians do, though. We memorize the Great Commission. We hold, we hold Bible studies about the Great Commission. We sing songs about fulfilling the Great Commission. But how many of us actually do it? I have some stats for you tonight, and I just want to read these off. 95% of all Christians have never won a soul to Christ. 80% of all Christians do not consistently witness for Christ. Less than 2% are involved in the ministry of evangelism. 63% of leadership have not led anybody to Jesus Christ in two years. 49% of leadership ministries do not minister outside of the church walls. 89% of ministries have zero time reserved for evangelism. 47% of millennials say evangelism is wrong. Now this is where we stand as a people, and then I have, this is what we do about it. Hello? All right, I'm back on. So I got it mixed up, actually. I had it backwards in my notes. So that's what we do about it, and what we say about it is, so that, that's how we react to what we say. 99% of the leadership ministries believe that every Christian, including leadership, has been commanded to preach the gospel in the world. 97% believe that if the leadership had a greater conviction and involvement in evangelism, that it would be an example for the church to follow. 96% of leadership believe their churches would have grown faster if they would have been more involved in evangelism. Those are stats from Bible.org. We wish for something, but I, I just don't feel like we're acting on it all that much. Is that me? Okay. So Jesus, Jesus put this Bible, put this in the Bible as a command, not an option. And I just feel like some people think that this is an option of whether they, what they feel like or how they're going to feel once they witness about Jesus Christ, but it just isn't. It's a command that Jesus gives us as his Christian or as his church. And if you, if you just look at the most prominent Christians, the ones that have the greatest influence on us today... They're the ones that are being not afraid to share the gospel for Jesus Christ, such as Paul, John Wesley, or Martin Luther. They're not afraid, and they're being a witness, and they're involved in evangelism. And those are the ones that have the greatest impact. And they're not afraid to stand up. And I just feel like 
a lot of Christians doubt whether if they minister to someone, Jesus will actually work in their lives. Because Jesus talks about it. He's like, they worshipped, but still some doubted. And if, if we doubt and we don't have any faith that Jesus can actually work, then he won't work because we need that faith. He'll only work if, if we let him. The truth of the matter is that we are, as Christians are doubting if God can really work in somebody's life. Americans have access to everything. The Bible, devotion, every Bible, every devotional, every computer. We don't have to pray in secret. But yet we still have one of the lowest ratings for people witness to. How is that? I, I don't want doubt to have control of my life. And Mackie Church of the Nazarene, I want to challenge you tonight. Because I feel that God has called us to something greater. Something outside of these four walls. And outside of your comfort zones. So let's rise up to the challenge. And um, I challenge you to be a witness to one person every day of this week. I did the math. And if we, and if we minister to seven... Let's just say we minister to five different people every day of this week. And there's 100 people in this room. That's 500 people witness to Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's what matters. Amen. That's what matters. Right. So I challenge you tonight, Mac, Church and Nazarene, whether you're at work or whether you're at school or even if you're at Walmart shopping for your groceries, just be a witness for somebody there because I'm excited to see what God will do if, if we all can rise up to this challenge. Thank you.